Hi, so uh, today we will be uh, talking on a new topic called uh, measurement errors and uh, calibration problem and uh, here is the uh, content of this uh, topic. Um, so, case uh, where the response and uh, regressors are jointly distributed random variable and uh, measurement error in regressors and also we will be talking about uh, the calibration problem which is uh, called inverse uh, problem. Uh, uh, let me uh, talk about the objective of this uh, uh, topic. Uh, in almost uh, all uh, regression model, we assume that the response variable uh, is a random variable, where the regressor variable uh, like x 1, x 2, x k, they are called controlled variable, they are not uh, uh, random variable. Okay. So, what uh, we will do in this topic is that we will talk about uh, two variations of this uh, situation and uh, as I told you know that y is a random variable and uh, uh, x is a controlled variable which is not a random variable. Uh, let me just you know uh, recall uh, why I uh, say y is a random variable. So, in simple linear regression model, uh, what we consider the model is like uh, y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus epsilon. And uh, we assume that uh, epsilon is a random variable which follows uh, normal distribution with uh, mean 0 and uh, variance sigma square. So, this is the assumption you know we make uh, in simple linear regression also in the multiple linear regression model. So, assuming that you know a sigma is a random variable uh, which follows normal distribution and they are independent if you put i here. Uh, is same as you know assuming that y is a random variable. Okay. So, what we assume is that the response variable y is a random variable and the regressors like x 1, x 2, x k they are not random variable they are called controlled variable. or also we call it you know deterministic variable. variable. Okay. Uh, so, here we will be talking about uh, two variation of this uh, situation. Uh, the first one is uh, uh, both response and the regressor variable are jointly distributed random variables. And the second case we will be considering the second uh, variation is uh, there are measurement error in regressors. Okay. So, let me talk about uh, the first variation where uh, both the response and the regressor variables are jointly 
a distributed random variable. So, uh, let me assume that the first case that uh, x and y that is the regressor and the response variable are jointly normally distributed. Right. So, usually x is not a random variable, but here we are considering both of them are uh, random variable and they are jointly normally distributed. So, then the joint PDF probability density function of x and y is uh, 1 by 2 pi sigma 1 sigma 2 1 minus rho square. exponential 2 1 minus rho square y minus mu 1 by sigma 1 square plus x minus mu 2 by sigma 2 square minus twice rho y minus mu 1 by sigma 1 into x minus mu 2 by sigma 2. Okay. Well, so, this is the joint PDF uh, of x and y when they are uh, jointly normally distributed. So, here uh, expectation of y is equal to mu 1 variance of y is equal to sigma 1 square expectation of x is equal to mu 1 sorry mu 2 and variance of x is equal to sigma 2 square. And there is one more parameter that is called the correlation coefficient between x and y. So, the rho is the correlation coefficient which is equal to uh, the covariance between x and y. So, y minus mu 1 into x minus mu 2 by sigma 1 sigma 2. So, notation for this one is sigma 1 2 by sigma 1 sigma 2. So, this is the correlation coefficient between y and x. Okay. And once you have the joint distribution, we know uh, we can find the uh, conditional distribution also. So, let me write down uh, the conditional distribution of y given x is uh, y given x follows normal distribution with uh, mean mu 1 plus rho sigma 1 sigma 2 x minus mu 2 and variance 1 minus rho square sigma 1 square. Okay. So, this is the conditional distribution of x of y given x which is normally distributed with some mean and variance. Okay. So, what I can write uh, here is that the expectation of y given x is equal to mu 1 plus rho sigma 1 by sigma 2 x minus mu 2 and this I can write as 
beta naught plus beta 1 x right, where my beta naught is equal to mu 1 minus rho mu 2 sigma 1 by sigma 2 and beta 1 is equal to rho sigma 1 by sigma 2. Okay. So, why I derived all these things? Because just to say that here you can see the uh, conditional expectation of y or the expectation of y given x is this one. So, this is the model we need to consider when both x and y are random variable. Okay. And what we do when x is not a random variable, when x is a controlled variable or deterministic variable, uh, what we do is that we fit the model expectation of y, which is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x. So, this is the model we fit in the case when y is a random variable and x is a deterministic variable, it is not a random variable. Okay. So, writing this is same as uh, y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus epsilon, where epsilon follows normal 0 sigma square. Okay. So, similarly, uh, this is the difference only. So, this is the model we need to consider here, whereas when both an x and y are random variable and this is the model we consider when y is a random variable, but x is not a random variable. That is, uh, I know in, in almost all cases, this is the situation that y is a random variable, but x is, a, is, is not a random variable, it is a um, controlled variable. Okay. Now, how to fit uh, this uh, model? Because we are talking about the case when both x and y are random variable. right? So, from here we know the conditional distribution of y given x. So, from here uh, we can say that this uh, y i given x i this follows normal distribution with uh, mean beta naught plus beta 1 x i and the variance is 1 minus rho square sigma 1 square. And they are independent. Okay. So, I am given uh, the observations y i x i both are random variable and uh, I know that this is true. That is the uh, random variable y given x is uh, or random variable y i given x i uh, are independent random variable. Uh, and they follow normal distribution with mean uh, beta naught plus beta 1 x i and variance a constant variance. Okay. Now, to estimate this parameter and we want to fit the model y given x is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x. Right? So, uh, fitting this model means we need to estimate uh, the coefficients beta naught and uh, beta 1. So, what we will do is that we will go for uh, maximum likelihood estimator, because here we know the distribution of uh, conditional distribution of y given x i. So, the likelihood function is and they are independent. So, the likelihood function of y 1, y 2, y n given x 1, x 2, x n um, is just uh, the product of 
uh, marginal density. So, that is uh, nothing but 1 by root over of 2 pi sigma 1 square 1 minus rho square and e to the power of minus 1 by 2 sigma 1 square 1 minus rho square y i minus beta naught minus beta 1 x i square for i equal to 1 to n. So, this is the likelihood function and this can be written as uh, 1 by root over of 2 pi sigma 1 square 1 minus rho square to the power of n e to the power of minus 1 by 2 sigma 1 square 1 minus rho square summation y i minus beta naught minus beta 1 x i whole square. Okay. So, what the maximum likelihood estimate uh, uh, technique suggests is that you construct the uh, likelihood function and here you can go for uh, and and find the parameter beta naught and beta 1 in such a way that that such a way that the likelihood function is maximum. So, maximizing this likelihood is same as minimizing this thing. Okay. So, uh, we find beta naught and beta 1 such that such that this is minimum. So, find beta naught and beta 1 such that y i minus beta naught minus beta 1 x i whole square i, I equal to 1 to n this is minimum. So, uh, this is nothing but the least square function uh, we consider when while estimating beta naught and uh, beta 1 using the least square technique in simple linear regression model. So, we know what is beta naught hat and beta 1 hat. Uh, so, beta naught hat is equal to y bar minus beta 1 hat x bar and uh, beta 1 hat is equal to summation y i minus y bar x i minus x bar summation x i minus x bar whole square. So, this is nothing but s x y by s x x. So, these are uh, identical to those given by least square estimate, because we are minimizing the same function here, we are minimizing the uh, least square function here also. In case where x is a controlled variable. Okay. So, uh, here we are trying to estimate the model expectation of y given x, which is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 hat, sorry, beta naught plus beta 1 x, and we found that the estimate, the maximum likelihood estimate for beta naught and beta 1 are the same uh, as obtained by least square technique in case when x is a control is a controlled variable. Okay. And uh, here we have a new parameter uh, called uh, the correlation coefficient rho. So, this is the correlation, correlation coefficient between x and y 
and we what we want is that we want to draw some inference uh, about this uh, correlation coefficient and first we find an estimator for this one the estimator of rho which is the correlation coefficient is uh, just simple is the sample correlation coefficient sorry is sample correlation is a sample correlation coefficient that is equal to r. Okay, so, r is the sample correlation coefficient which is y i minus y bar into x i minus x bar right by square root of summation y i minus y bar whole square into x i minus x bar whole square. So, this is the sample correlation coefficient and this is the estimator for population correlation coefficient rho and this can be written as using the standard notation s x y by square root of s x x s y y. Okay. So, s y y is this one and we know that this one is also called s s square okay. sorry s s total. So, I will write this as s x y by square root of s x x and then S is total. Well, and now uh, note that whether we there is a relation between this uh, sample correlation coefficient, which is an estimator for rho, and the regression coefficient beta one. So we know that beta one hat is equal to s x y by s x x which can be written as in terms of r this can be written as s s total by s x x square root of this into r you can check that just plug r here you will get back this one. Okay. So, this says that uh, you know beta 1 hat and r are closely related okay. and also what we will do is we will see what is r square here. So, r square is equal to uh, from this expression r square is equal to s x x square you no know, s x x by s s total into beta 1 hat square. Okay. And this one can be written as uh, we know that beta 1 hat is uh, s x y by s x x. So, this can be written as beta 1 hat into s x y by s s total. You can you can check that you know just uh, um, take out 1 beta 1 hat and plug this value here and we know that this one is nothing but 
S S regression. This is interesting. So, S S regression by S S total and you know what is this quantity? This is called the coefficient of determination that is the capital R square. This is called coefficient of determination. Okay. So, what does this uh, R square uh, do is that it measures the proportion of variability in the response variable that is explained by the regression model and, uh, and what does R do is that uh, it measures the linear association between uh, x and y and here uh, we observe that you know r square is equal to the small r square which is the sample correlation coefficient is equal to the capital R square which is the coefficient of uh, determination. Okay. Uh, well, so what we do is that we just uh, uh, we have a new parameter uh, rho which is the correlation coefficient between x and y and uh, we will learn how to test uh, the significance of this I mean whether this uh, correlation coefficient is significant or not by testing the hypothesis that uh, H naught is rho equal to 0 against uh, H 1 that rho is not equal to 0. So, this is a useful test okay. and uh, the test uh, statistic for this hypothesis is uh, T naught which is equal to R root over of n minus 2 by 1 minus R square square root of this thing and this follows T n minus 2 degree of freedom under H naught. And uh, here is the rejection criteria you reject uh, H naught if the modulus value of this one is greater than T alpha by 2 n minus 2. Okay. So, here we, we learn about how to uh, test uh, the correlation coefficient um, is equal to 0 against the alternative hypothesis that the correlation coefficient is not equal to 0. Well, so, uh, so we, we talked about uh, one case here where both the uh, regressor variable x and the response variable y uh, both of them are random variables and uh, we observed that uh, the linear model we need to fit here is uh, very similar to the case when uh, y is a random variable and uh, x is a controlled variable that is the situation in almost all cases. And uh, here we assume that the random variable x and y they jointly follow uh, normal distribution by variate normal distribution. And so, we have a new parameter called rho here which is the correlation coefficient between these two uh, random variable. And if you see and we, we learned how to test the hypothesis that rho is equal to 0 against rho is not equal to 0. So, if you see from this uh, testing that you know rho is equal to 0 that means, uh, there is no uh, linear relationship between the um, regressor variable and the response variable which is same as you know testing. Uh, the beta 1 uh, is equal to 0 against beta 1 is not equal to 0. 
there also we say that if beta naught sorry if the beta 1 is equal to 0 then uh, then there is no relationship between uh, x and y. So, next uh, we will be talking about uh, uh, the another deviation we talked uh, we, uh, we mentioned that is uh, measurement errors in regressors. Okay. So, here we wish to fit the simple linear regression model, but the problem here is that, but the regressor but the regressor is measured with the error. Okay, so, what I mean by this? Uh, here, uh, suppose x i is the observed value of the regressor. So, this is the observed value. So, in usual case you know we consider that y is uh, sorry x is a uh, controlled variable and then there is no error uh, while measuring the value of x i which is equal to small x i, but here you know uh, the regressor is measured with error. So, x i is equal to small x i plus a i. So, what is this small x i? Small x i is the true value and uh, this a i is called the measurement error. Okay. So, I uh, will give an example to uh, illustrate uh, this uh, situation. Uh, let me consider this uh, example. Suppose, x is a uh, regressor variable, which uh, stands for the current flow in a in an electric uh, circuit. Okay. And uh, the current flow is measured with an ammeter which is not completely accurate. Okay. So, here a measurement error is experienced. Okay. So, this is the observed current flow capital X and the small x is the true current flow and this one is the measurement error. Okay. So, what we are given is that we are given the observation say y i that is the response variable and we are given x i capital X i we are given the observed value, but we want to find a linear relationship between y i and the true value of the regressor variable. Okay. So, uh, we will be talking about uh, uh, this uh, how to uh, deal with such situation. Uh, now, uh, let me go to my previous slide. Uh, here is the observed value you understood this is the observed current flow, this is the true current flow and here is the uh, measurement error. And uh, here we make the assumption that with uh, this expected value of measurement error, uh, 
is equal to 0 and uh, variance of a i the constant variance sigma a square. And of course, the response variable is a random variable the response variable is uh, subject to the usual error epsilon i okay, for i equal to 1 to n. Well, so now what we want is that we want to find the uh, relationship between the response variable y and the true value of x. Okay. So, we want to fit, we want to consider the model, the regression model is y i is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x i plus epsilon. So, here only the problem is that we do not have uh, small x i, this is the true value right. And, uh, but what we have is that we are given y i the response variable and the capital x i that is the measured uh, value of the regressor variable. Okay. So, this can be written as beta naught plus beta 1 in terms of capital X i, I can write this as X i minus A i, because of the fact that we assume that cap, uh, the measured value is equal to the true value plus the measurement error plus epsilon. Yeah, because see we are given y i and capital X i. So, we have to convert this model in terms of capital X i that is quite clear. So, this is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 X i plus epsilon i minus beta 1 A i. Okay. So, this is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 capital X i, I should write, I mean I should not mix here uh, capital X i and small x i, I used to do that before, I mean because uh, both of them are same, but uh, here I have to be careful. So, this is equal to gamma i. Okay. So, where this gamma i is equal to epsilon i minus beta 1 a i. So, now this uh, appears to be you know now we have the model uh, in terms of capital X i y i is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x i plus some error term. So, you may think that okay, we are done because uh, this is the model uh, we, uh, we know how to fit this model before also, but the problem here is that see uh, this capital X i is a random variable and this gamma i is also a random variable. Now, we need to check uh, whether before when x was a uh, controlled variable, there was no correlation between these two. right? Now, here we need to check whether there is, just a, there is uh, whether they are correlated or they are independent. Okay. So, what we will do is that we will compute the covariance of x i and gamma i, which is nothing but expectation of x i minus e x i into gamma i. Because expectation of gamma is of course equal to zero, because both expectation of epsilon i is equal to the expectation of a i that is uh, zero. Okay, so here 
I can write that this is equal to capital X i. My, now, the expected value of capital X i is equal to small x i, okay, that is small x i and uh, this one is equal to epsilon i minus beta 1 a i. Okay, right. Now, this one is equal to expectation of what is this capital X i minus small x i is equal to a i. So, a i into epsilon i minus beta 1 a i, right. And we assume that you know uh, perhaps I forgot to mention this that here uh, while I was talking about. Uh, this model here we assume that uh, expect these two are independent a i and epsilon i a i and epsilon i they are independent this is equal to 0. Okay. So, then this one is equal to minus beta 1 expectation of a i square. So, expectation of a i square is nothing but the variance of a i square which is equal to minus beta 1 sigma a square. So, here as you see that you know uh, this uh, uh, observed value of x i of the regressor and the model error they are correlated. So, uh, you cannot apply the standard or the ordinary least square technique to estimate the parameter beta naught and beta 1 here. Okay. Uh, so, it says that, so if we apply standard least square method to the data, we estimates the estimates of the model parameters are no longer unbiased. So, if you apply uh, just uh, simple uh, or ordinary least square technique, what we will be what we will get is that beta 1 hat is equal to uh, summation y i minus y bar into capital X i minus x bar, because this is the observed uh, regressive value by summation x i minus x bar whole square. Okay, but uh, you can check that the expected value of this uh, beta 1 hat is equal to beta 1 by 1 plus theta. That is the beta 1 hat we got here is not uh, an unbiased estimator of beta, where where theta is equal to sigma a square by sigma x square. Again, the sigma x square is equal to, uh, you need to check you know, uh, this one, sigma x square is this. Okay. So, what uh, this indicates is that if, so beta 1 hat is uh, biased estimator of beta 1 unless this uh, theta is equal to 0. That means, unless sigma a square is equal to 0. So, sigma a square is the measurement uh, error variance. Okay? Uh, so, this will be 0 that is there is no 
measurement error in regressor. Okay. Uh, and also, you know, if uh, this uh, sigma a square is uh, very small relative to sigma x square, the bias will be then theta will be small. So, the bias will be uh, I mean uh, once theta is small this quantity is almost close to 1 okay? then the bias will be uh, small. Okay? Uh, so, finally, the technique says that you know if uh, if variability in the measurement error that is sigma a square is small relative to the variability of the x value, uh, then it suggests that the measurement error, the measurement error can be ignored and ordinary least square method can be applied. Okay. So, here uh, we have learned you know how to uh, how to fit a model in the uh, presence of uh, measurement error in the uh, regressor variable and uh, next uh, what we will be doing is that we will be talking about uh, the calibration problem which is also called the inverse problem. So, here uh, usually you know given a value of regressor variable x, uh, we estimate the response variable y. Here the problem is uh, just opposite here you know you are given a value of y, you have to estimate the corresponding uh, regressor value okay? that is called the calibration problem. So, here is the calibration. problem. So, here is the statement of this uh, problem is that given uh, observed value of y, say y naught. You have to determine the x value corresponding to it. Okay. Let me give an example you now why we need uh, this uh, calibration problem. So, example is uh, we know that the temperature reading given by uh, thermocouple is uh, a linear function of the 
actual temperature. Okay, so, what I mean by this is that the observed temp temperature, this uh, observed temperature uh, given by this uh, thermocouple is a linear function of the actual temperature. So, this is observed temperature is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 actual temperature plus epsilon. Okay. So, in such situation you know uh, you uh, know the observed temperature and you want to know the actual temperature. Okay. So, given a value of y say some object observed temperature y naught, you can determine the corresponding x value that is the actual temperature. Okay. So, this is what the purpose of this uh, uh, calibration problem is and how do we solve this problem is that. Uh, so, suppose we have uh, some y i x i values for i equal to 1 to n. So, what you have to do is that you just uh, first uh, feed the model y hat equal to beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat x and let uh, y naught be the observed value of x sorry observed value of y. And what you want to know is that you want to know uh, the value of x for which y equal to y naught okay, from this uh, straight line fit. So, a natural point estimation of the corresponding value of x is say call it x naught hat is equal to just put uh, y naught here and then what is the x naught hat corresponding is equal to y naught minus beta 1 sorry beta naught hat by beta 1 hat assuming that assuming that beta 1 hat is not equal to 0. Okay. So, uh, this is a very simple problem like the calibration problem uh, is called the is also called the inverse problem. So, uh, uh, here given a value of x sorry given a value of y say y naught you have to find the corresponding x. So, once you have a fitted model there is no problem finding a point estimation for the corresponding x values. Okay. So, what we have learned in this topic is that uh, um, the usual situation in in almost all cases what happen is that y is uh, y is regressive variable which is a random variable and uh, x is regressor variable and uh, it is uh, usually a deterministic variable or controlled variable. And here we have learned about two uh, variations of this situation uh, like when x and y both are um, random variable then how to fit the model. And also we have learned uh, when there is a measurement error in in regressor variable how to deal with that uh, situation also okay so we need to stop now uh, thank you